Hello, welcome back to Infobox. I know many of you today, many people today have had relatives, even themselves having heart problems, having organic problems, basically they need replacement and they don't have where to get them from. Some of you have to wait for people to die so they can be able to donate you the organs. Yeah. However, things have changed. Today is what we call tissue printing. They just, if you want a heart, they just put it for you there and then, then you have a heart. If you want a, a kidney, they just print it there and then, then you have a kidney. So, that's how the world is changing. Let us go to the clip and see how this is done. Cleaning, this is what you get. A replacement blood vessel made out of your cells. This blood vessel is the width of a few human hairs. Back in North Carolina, they're developing another application for bioprinting, for wounds. One of the strategies is to have a printing machine that not only prints, but also scans. So basically the patient is first scanned. So the wound area gets a scan of the wound, and then we're able to go back with the printer and print the right layers of tissues right where they belong. Now, for most organs, there's still a long way to go before they'll be ready for patients. But research is progressing on artificial kidneys, heart valves, large blood vessels, and skin. Here it's being slowly stretched out. They're even working on artificial ears and fingers. Of course, fingers is still a long time away of us actually getting that into a patient. Uh, but the ear is simpler than a digit, and we're creating ears in the project we're doing right now with the military to provide these kinds of structures to our uh, injured warriors. Even muscles are up for replacement. To create artificial muscle, we use the same strategies as we have used with other tissues, but we also exercise them. We put them in these small bioreactors, these exercise machines that actually stretch and compress the muscle structures so they build up strength over time before we implant them. But the organs most in demand are kidneys and livers. And Anthony's team recently had a breakthrough. They developed miniature livers that functioned like human ones, in the lab at least. But artificial liver and kidney transplants are some way off because they're so complicated. The kidneys have a very complex structure because it's a solid organ. And so unlike other structures, like flat structures such as skin, which are the simplest, tubular structures like blood vessels or urethras, which are a second level of complexity, or even the bladders, which are a third level of complexity, the kidneys are a solid organ and have a fourth level of complexity. And therefore, you have a lot more cell types so it requires much more sophisticated methods for engineering. Still, fixing up livers and kidneys may be closer than you think we may be able to patch them. If you take chronic kidney disease, for example, by the time a patient shows up at the doctor to say that I don't feel well, they are usually down to less than 10% of the function of that organ. That says you don't need the whole organ to be replaced to feel well. The tissue that is required to replace is actually only 10 to 20% to change the way that patient feels, change their quality of life, and, and really uh, be effectively a cure for them. 